95% of everything we do is right every day in business. But look for the 5% you do wrong, and that's what makes you better than everybody else. There are no spare customers, okay? It's a competitive Facts. world in every one of our businesses. Take no out of your damn vocabulary. You, you're, you're on a business trip, and it's 1102. You hang up the phone and, and uh, on a call, and you call down to order some breakfast. And they say, I'm sorry, sir, uh, we don't serve breakfast anymore. I say, that's okay, no problem. I don't need a waffle or, or an eggs benedict. Just throw a couple of eggs in a skillet and send them up scrambled, however it's easy for you to do. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, we don't serve breakfast. Why are you telling me no? I didn't ask you Preacher. for anything special. Preacher. You're going to throw a burger in the pan. Just throw me a couple of eggs and take care of me. B, you're in the hospitality business, okay? And you're telling me no. And everybody's in the hospitality business no matter what they do. You take care of your customer. Okay, you take care of your customer. It's no different than we walk in and your people meet us polite. You put a welcome up on the screen. You come in here, everybody couldn't be. Can I get you some water? Tell me, can, can I do this for you? You're in the service business. Everybody so is. why do you want to be an ass and, and say no to somebody when it's just as easy to say yes or Tell you just give an alternative? Because the company's being run by somebody who's not. Because these companies get big and they hire somebody who fucking went to Harvard and fucking worked at Bain and McKinsey and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I think you, know, you can over worship and mythologize the idea of working extremely hard. For my particular makeup, I mean, it really is true that I didn't believe in weekends, I didn't believe in vacations. I mean, you know, I knew everybody's license plate, so I could tell you over the last month when their car had come and gone from the, the parking <laughs> lot. It, it, so I don't recommend it. A, I don't think most people would enjoy it. Uh, once I got into my 30s, I could hardly even imagine how I had done that uh, because by then some natural behavior kicked in and I loved weekends and uh, you know my girlfriend liked vacations and that turned out to be kind of a neat thing. Uh, <laughs> now I take lots of vacations. I mean, my 20-year-old self is so disgusted with my uh, current uh, uh, self, you know. I, I was sure I would never do anything but ride and coach. You know, now I have a plane. So it's, it's <laughs> very much counter-revelations have taken place at, at high speed. But yes, it is nice if during those first several years, if you have a team that's chosen to be pretty maniacal about the company. And how far that goes, you, you know, should have a mutual understanding so you're not uh, one person expecting one thing, another person expecting another thing. And you'll have individuals who, who have, you know, health or relatives or things that are distracted. But yes, I have a fairly hardcore view that there should be a very large uh, sacrifice made during those, those early years, particularly if you're trying to do some engineering things that you, you have to get the feasibility. And, you know, in the software world, it's very, particularly for platforms, these are winner-take-all markets. So, you know, the greatest mistake ever uh, is the whatever mismanagement I engaged in that caused Microsoft not to be what Android is. That is, Android is the standard phone platform, non-Apple phone, phone platform. That was a natural thing for Microsoft to win. And, you know, it's it really is winner-take-all. We. You know, if you're there with half as many apps or 90% as many apps, you're on your way to complete doom. There's room for exactly one non-Apple operating system. And that, you know, what's that worth? 400 billion uh, that would be, you know, transferred from company yeah. G to company M. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's amazing to me having made, you know, one of the greatest mistakes of all time. And there was this antitrust lawsuit and various things that, you know, our other assets, Windows Office are still very strong, so we are a leading company. Uh, if we'd gotten that one right, we would be the, the. Uh, leading <laughs> company, but oh well. The difference uh, between A and D. Uh, so there, this idea that just small differences can magnify themselves, that doesn't exist for a lot of businesses. You know, if you're a service business, it, it doesn't exist. But for software platforms, uh, it's, it's absolutely gigantic. And so that's partly where you have the mentality of every night you think, am I screwing this up? Uh, and eventually uh, we did screw a super important one. 
we, we almost did die at SpaceX actually. So we, I budgeted for three flights. Um, I mean, technically, I, I didn't have a plan where I, I had, a, had, this, had the money from PayPal. I had like about 180 million from PayPal. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll allocate half of that to SpaceX and Tesla and Solar City, and um, that should be fine. I'll have 90 million likes, just lots, you know. Uh, but but then what happened is um, things cost more, took longer than than I thought. So I had a choice of either put the rest of the money in or the companies are going to die. Um, and so I ended up putting all the money in and, and borrowing money for rent from friends. Um, 2008 was brutal. Um, yeah, 2008, we had the third consecutive failure of the Falcon 1 rocket for SpaceX. Um, Tesla almost went bankrupt. We, we closed our financing around 6 p.m. Christmas Eve. 2008. It was the last hour of the last day that it was possible. We would have gone bankrupt two days after Christmas. And I got divorced. That was a rough thing. Building a spot to It poses a question, or maybe you just answer the question of why is no one else doing these things? <laughs> <laughs> What's your pain threshold? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's real high. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, SpaceX is alive by the skin of its teeth, so is Tesla. Um, if, if things had just gone a little bit the other way, both companies would be dead. And I, and I had, like, one of the most difficult choices I have ever faced uh, in life was, was in 2008. Um, and um, I think I had, uh, like, maybe $30 million left. 30 or 40 million dollars left in 2008 and I had two choices. I could put it all into one company and then the other company would definitely die um, or split it between the two companies. And, but if I split it between the two companies then both might die. Uh, and you know, when you put your blood, sweat and tears into creating something, building something, it's like a child. Um, and this, so it's like which one Am I going to let one starve to death? I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I split the money between the two. Fortunately, I think this, uh, they both. They don't fucking believe it. If you don't believe it, you won't do it. If you can't think, if you don't think you can fuck all night, guys, believe me, you ain't going to fuck all night. If you think you can fuck all night, by God, you're gonna die trying. And they, and you know, and you're gonna, on the webinars, you're gonna hear it again and again. They ask the same, same motherfucking questions every time. I could put a script for the questions and we could just skip all that shit and just give you the questions because they're 9, 80, 90, 95% the same questions. Every motherfucker that asks the questions, the same questions over and over. You're gonna hear it on the webinars every day. You're gonna hear what it is. The same fucking questions. They don't believe it. And they, even when the motherfucker says it, it's like I like uh, he's a marionette. Like I'm, you know, I'm pulling, the, uh, making his lips move. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. You have never met anybody like me, and you probably never will, because you're a cunt. Where's the vagina cream? I give you this vagina cream so you can rub it on your snatch, because you're all cunts. I, uh, at the beginning, I never thought, um, I, I thought when I was young, I said, everything's possible. Now I know not everything's possible. When you have something, you have to think about, you have to consider about the others. You have to consider about the customer, society, your employees, your shareholders, so society. There are so many things that I think if you continue to work hard, there's, there's possibility. And um, I just feel that I'm enthusiastic about what we are doing. At the beginning, for the first five years, I just want to survive. And five years later, I think that's too bad. Yeah. But later, I think, wow, so many people's lives changed. I was so 
excited, you know, for the first three years, we made a zero revenue. Zero revenue. But we, we are so excited to continue to work. You know what happened? I remember many times when I go to a restaurant and have dinner. Somebody came, I, when I was trying to pay the bill, the owner of the restaurant came to say, Sir, your bill is paid by someone. And the small note said, Hey, Mr. Ma, I'm your customer of Alibaba Group. Alibaba platform, I made a lot of money, and I know you don't make any money. I pay the bill for you. <laughs> And I remember one thing, one day that I was uh, sitting somewhere in the coffee, somebody sending me a cigar. I don't smoke cigar, but there's a note of, thank you very much, I'm your customer. <laughs> and I remember the top of days, I went to Shangri-La Hotel in Beijing when I got on the taxi. A man who opened the door for me, the boy at the gate, he said, Jack, thank you very much. But like, I'm still you... here, my girlfriend makes more money. And this is something that you know that it's not a mission. If you don't do it, nothing's possible. If you try to do it, at least you have the hope. It was a long time ago yeah. when I first started Millennial Money. And I made the, my usual wise-ass remark, only lazy people use their own money. And that's because I have spent much of my life raising capital. You know, today you have crowdfunding and all that stuff. But the reason I had to learn to raise money was because I had no money. And so if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in there, my, my rich dad always said, never say I can't afford it. And it was my rich dad and many of my teachers subsequent to that. They said, lazy people always say I can't afford it. I don't have the money. That's why they're poor. They have a poor mindset. So instead of figuring out how to raise money, it's just really easy to be a loser. And I call it losers. It pisses them off. Because we all have the power, if we wanted to, to not be poor if we learned how to raise money. So I hear, you know, and the reason I get upset, I still get hot with this. My poor dad, my poor, my PhD father, he always said to me, he says, you know, I'd be a rich man if I didn't have you kids. And I said, well, you know, Dad, uh, it's not my fault you had kids. You know what I mean? You know, I just can't afford it because I have kids. And the more he said that, the angrier I got. So when I went, met my rich dad at age nine, you know, he says, well, that's why your old man's poor, because he's lazy. He thinks his PhD is going to carry him. He says, everybody can say, I don't have money, I can't afford it. He says, that's why he's poor. He's lazy. But my father kept going back to school, you know, Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern. He never learned any of this stuff. They still don't know it because most teachers want a paycheck, pension, and tenure. They want job security. So the mindset is different. By far the best investment you can make is in yourself. That, for example, communication skills. I tell the students that come, that they're going to graduate schools and business and they, they're learning all these complicated formulas and all that. If they just learn to communicate better, both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. You know, I mean, it, it, uh, if you can't communicate, somebody says, you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens, you know, basically. And and you have to be able to get get forth your ideas. And uh, and that's, that's relatively easy. I did it myself with the Dale Carnegie course. Some people wish I'd taken a shorter course now in terms of my talking later on. But it, it, it's just hugely important. And you, if you invest in yourself, nobody can take it away from you. I mean, you, you and uh, the second thing, which I'll get a certain criticism for not living it, but, but I do tell the, those students, you know, that if I gave you a car and it'd be the only car you get the rest of your life, you, you take care of it like you can't believe it. Any scratch you'd fix that moment, you read the owner's manual, you keep a garage, you do all these things, and you get exactly one mind and one, and one body in this world, and, and you can't start taking care of it when you're 50. By that time, you'll have rusted out if you haven't done anything. So you, you, should, you should really make sure that you just remember that you've just got one mind and body to get through life with and to do the most with it.